Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt and today I'll be teaching you how to script a tool animation on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. So all we have to do is head right into the game and if we equip the tool and then we click to activate it, it'll play our animation. Okay, so now that you know what the script does, I actually want to show you how to make it. So the first thing that we have to do is create our tool that we actually want to animate. So you might already have a tool, you could use this, but for this video, I'm just going to create a new one. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to insert a new part into workspace. Uh, and I'm just going to click the plus over here and I'm going to add a new tool. And I'm going to drag the part underneath of the tool and this will put the part in the tool. So when we equip the tool, the part will come up. And we just have to name this handle so it moves to our hand right away. Uh, and that's it for the tool. We actually have our tool made. You know, again, you can use whatever tool you want, but in this video, we're just going to use a basic part for our tool. Uh, and now we actually want to get to animating. We want to make the animation that we want to play with our script. So what I'm going to do is if you click on the plugins tab over here, you have all these different plugins. You know, you might not have all of these, but by default, when you install Roblox Studio, you have these three right here. You have the build rig, the avatar importer, and the animation editor. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click this build rig button right here. And based on your game type, so if you have an R15 game, you wanna click on R15. But if you have an R6 game, you wanna click on R6. So my game's R15, so I'm gonna click R15. And you wanna select the type of rig that you'd like. This just means the type of character that you'd like to use to animate. You could always create your animation on a man rig, but then you could have it play on a block rig. But ideally you wanna have it set so the animation is created on the type of character that your user is actually playing on. So I'm just gonna use a block rig since my character is a block, but again, you can use whatever type of rig you'd like. Uh, and that'll create a new dummy and put it under workspace. And now we actually have to make the animation. We have to create our animation that we're gonna play with the tool. So I'm just gonna click on this animation editor tab right up here. And it's going to pull up this window. You might be on Windows, so it'll look a little bit different, but generally it's going to look about the same. Uh, and the first thing it says, select a rig to animate. So we're going to click on this dummy, and we want to name our animation. So I'm just going to name it Tool Animation. You can name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter because we use the animation ID to play our animation. And then I'm just going to click Create. So now what we do is we have our dummy right here, uh, and we can actually animate it. So let me just explain a little bit about this animation editor. So we have this right here, this is called our scrub bar, and it signifies how far through the animation we are. So if we click play, you'll see the scrub bar, well if we had things here, it would move. But this basically plays the animation over time. These right up here, they say how much time has passed, right? You know, so far into the animation. Uh, and then, so this is the play button, you can skip animation, a few other things here, but that's really what you need to know. Um, so to animate a part on a rig, what you do is you want to select the part, right, just like that, and it'll come up in blue, and then you can use this rotate feature right here to actually rotate the part to however you want it to be. So as you can see, I want my arm to start like this, so I'm going to rotate my arm like this. And as you'll see, it'll create two what we call keyframes right here. And these keyframes signify what in time where the arm will actually be or where the part you're animating will be. So we have our first keyframe. And now so this is going to be the first frame. So when the animation starts, the arm is going to look like this. But if we move along the animation, we don't have anything out here. So I'm going to go just a little bit further in and I'm going to move the arm again. So I'm just going to move my arm up a little bit and you'll see it'll create another keyframe. So if we go back to the beginning and then we click the play button like this, you'll see it'll move our arm up. It's going to figure out it's called tweening, right? It's interpolation. It creates the amount, right, that we have to move the arm in between those two positions. So it's going to make it smooth and it's not just going to be like a blocky move. So what you can do, so we have our arm going up. I want it to go back down again for this tool. So I'm just going to grab this first key point and I'm going to highlight it by selecting. And I'm just going to click Control C to copy and then I'm going to paste it right here. And this is going to put it back. So look, so we go up just like this and then we go right back down. And we can play this just to see if the timing's right, if I start at the beginning. And I think that's a little slow, so I'm just going to adjust my keyframes and make them a little bit closer to each other. And this will actually make it so it'll play it faster. The closer they are together, the faster your animation will play. And I think that's a pretty good speed. Maybe you could use this for like a hammer or something like that. That's what you could use this animation for. So we have that. Now what we need to do is actually export that animation to Roblox in order for us to use it in our script. 
So I'm just going to click where it says tool animation right here and I'm going to click right here it's going to say set animation priority and we have to do this before we export it just so that when you know when we're moving it doesn't override the animation i just like setting my animation priority to action but you could set it to whatever one's best for your circumstance so i'm going to do that and then i'm going to click the export button and we're going to export this to roblox i'm going to click on create new and i'm just going to name this tool animation and we're going to click finish and we just have to wait for it to export it's going to take a second and there we go and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, so there's going to be a zero in front of your animation, the numbers after the zero, but before that slash. We want to copy those numbers, just like that. Let me grab it right there. And then I'm just going to click OK because we're done. And that's all we have to do. Our animation is complete. Now we're actually going to have to play it. So the first thing we have to do is create an animation object. So I'm just going to click on this plus button right next to the tool. Uh, and I'm going to create an animation just by typing in animation and we'll add that. And then in this animation, it has a property called animation ID. We want to set that property to our animation. And this already, this basically has the animation loaded up and we can load it into the humanoid so that we can play it later on. But this is how we actually specify what animation we want to play. So we have that inside of our animation object. And now we actually can get into scripting this. So that's enough modeling, enough physical stuff. We can actually start you know, doing the code, doing the scripting. So, I'm gonna click on plus next to tool and I'm gonna insert a new script. Uh, and I'm just gonna name the script animation script, but you can name it whatever you'd like. Uh, and now what we're gonna do is we'll actually write the code. So we're gonna delete that print hello world. Uh, and the first thing that I wanna do is get a reference to our tool object. So our tool is right here, it's the parent of all these. I'm just gonna say local tool, we'll make a variable. Tool equals script.parent, because script.parent, right, it's the tool. Uh, and then I also want to get a reference to our animation so we can use that later on. So I'm going to say local animation equals tool dot animation. And that gets a reference to this object right here. Not the animation ID, we need the specific animation itself. Uh, and after this, what we're going to do is we're going to hook into the tool dot activated event. So the tool dot activated event, you know, we could use mouse click. So when the player clicks their mouse, but I like using activated because it works on computer and mobile devices. So on mobile, it's when you tap your screen and on computer, it's when you click your screen. Also, the benefit of using activated is if the user has their chat up or they're clicking on another element inside of Roblox's core GUI, it would activate our tool and we don't want that, right? So what we do is we use tool.activated in order to make sure that the player actually wants to activate the tool. So the way we're going to do that is just say tool.activated and then we're going to connect that to a function. And we don't need to get any parameters inside of this, we just want to get when it's activated. Uh, and then the first variable I want to set up in here is character. So I want to get a reference to the player's character. So local character equals tool.parent. And you're probably wondering, why would it be tool.parent? And the reason why is because whenever you equip a tool, the character, the tool always goes underneath the player's character. So if you ever say tool.parent and the tool is equipped, it gets the player's character, which is super useful for us. Uh, so we have a reference to our character, and now we want a reference to the character's humanoid. So we'll say local humanoid equals character.humanoid. And that gives us a reference, so tool.parent.humanoid, so character.humanoid. Uh, and then after this, we have one more variable to go, and that is the animation track. Now the way Roblox animations work is you can't just say animation colon play because we didn't specify who we want to play it on. Do we want to play it on Bob? Do we want to play it on Charlie? Do we want to play it on Wyatt? Who do we want to actually have the animation animate their character on, right? So what we need to do is use this function of humanoid called load animation. So we load this animation object to the humanoid that we want, right, to the specific player, and then we can actually play it. So I'm going to create a new variable, so local animation track, and this basically is just allows us to control it over time, or we can pause it, play, do all that kind of stuff. So animation track equals humanoid, we'll use that variable, colon load animation. So we're just loading this animation to the player's humanoid, and we're gonna pass in the animation object, this right here. Uh, and then after this, we only have one more line to go. All we have to do is play the animation. So all we're gonna say is animation track, colon play, just like that. So when it's activated, it gets the character, gets the humanoid, creates an animation track, and then we play that animation track. And that's actually all we have to do I'm just going to drag this tool under starter pack, but you can put it wherever you want. 
you can put it in start a character, or server storage, or however you want to reference it. Um, but I want it to go into my character right when we go in. And I'm just going to click one. And as you'll see, when we click, it'll play the animation. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I have the Paysimmon link with the code and the Roblox model link with everything shown in this video in the description. And I'll see you guys later.